We're gonna watch this video by Ratatasker entitled Elden Ring wants you to play differently. It's nine minutes long. Let's buckle in and learn about how they want me to play differently. I'm still gonna play the same way I always play, but I wanna see what they're talking about. So. I love how I saw the Star Wars thing up yesterday. That was kind of cool. The focus of Souls games combat has always been an emphasis on timing. Movement in Dark Souls is relatively where my where my webcam go? And so when you wait a fucking minute. All right. You perform an attack. You won't be able to do anything else until the attack completes and the animation plays out. I know shit pisses and so me pretty off. Pretty much in all Souls games, combat is about finding openings. We it's actually about finding an opportunity to attack. It's about finding an opportunity to heal. Yeah. You dodge, block, and position yourself so that you can take advantage of that opportunity. And when finally the moment comes, you attack as much as you can. Right. This rhythm is the heart of Souls combat. It's, it's fucking one annoying. One of the very main reasons that Souls games became popular in the first place. Look how much better but the UI looks on Elden Ring. Different. It's doing something interesting, and that's what I want to talk about today in this video. Stab him right in the pussy! See, in the previous games, when I say taking advantage of an opening, I mean something very specific. Exploiting an opportunity in those games is synonymous with pushing synonymous. the button. At least it is when we're talking about boss battles. There Yaga. are caveats, of course. Caveats. Some I like the way he speaks. That were very useful against some enemies, and some of them were very useful in PvP. We didn't get and but a half a fucking minute into Dark Souls. Arts, and some of those weapon arts were useful in the previous situations, and some of them were even useful in boss battles sometimes. Souls of the Undead. But even with those caveats, I think my point stands. Generally. During a boss battle, when you find an opening, you're doing standard R1 attacks, generally. And Elden Ring said, fuck that shit, brother! Like Elden Ring is trying to change that. Yeah. Elden Ring has added mechanics that I think are designed to incentivize the player to play slightly different when it comes to melee combat. I didn't use, I barely and used R1. Some regular enemies as well. I'm talking about the stagger meter. In oh, Elden Ring, there's okay. an invisible Nevermind. posture bar that all enemies have. When you deplete that bar, the enemies are opened up for a critical strike. You get in there and fucking stab them right in the motherfucking shit. shit. Yep. It's similar to the posture bar that enemies had in Sekiro. Or maybe a more Sek comparable Sekiro. example is the posture bar that enemies have in Ghost of Tsushima. I love the and way he speaks. The interesting thing about this posture bar is that you're very unlikely to break it with just R1 attacks. And that's true even if you're using a big weapon like Bro. a power and two-handing it. R1s by default seem to have a very low posture breaking ability. Dude, I, I really hate that throughout my whole playthrough of Elden Ring, I had a bunch of cool shields. I, I just never fucking blocked when I had them equipped. Regardless of what weapon you're using. On the other hand, fully charged R2s do massive damage to the posture bar. And in fact, they've been buffed quite a bit because they do like three times the damage. I just do my Ashes of War. I tried well. with several weapons and pretty much all the ones that I checked. The fully charged R2 did about three times as much damage as a normal R1. He's whipping his ass. Damage. It was crazy. Jumping R2s also do decent damage, and they do big damage to the stagger bar. I was gonna say, jumping R2s do a fuck ton of damage. Mechanic, the guard counter that you can do. It also does a lot of damage to the enemy posture. Guard counter against most enemies out in the wild just absolutely shreds them. I was kind of worried that was gonna be an absolute cheese throughout all the bosses, but it wasn't. Now, all of this is told to the player in the opening tutorial when you played the network test. But I kind of overlooked it and didn't realize how important it was going to be until later. Don't back off the map. You're getting close. The fell omen. Oh, shit. Margit messed me up. He beat me so many times that I had to start experimenting with other stuff. 29 times for me. I started experimenting with jump attacks, fully charged R2s, and shield counters. I had to fucking phone a friend. And what I noticed was that the times that I just used R1s, Margaret would not get staggered even once. And that was even in fights where I had gotten his health so low that I almost killed him. But when I started weaving in these new mechanics, that more depressing, brother? R2s, guard counters, and jumping R2s, it became rare from then on for me not to get three or four posture breaks and be able to critical strike Bro! all those times. Oh, okay. I'm better than about me. With small weapons like long sword and scimitar. More importantly, though, just look at this footage. Look at how cool you yeah, could bro. look if you're playing with all these new mechanics. Having to make these new risk reward decisions. You're fucking cracked. Yeah, fuck Corey. I love amazing. him. And I'm fairly sure that it's intentional. I think the game is trying to guide you to play this way. I think that Ooh, as what you a parry. down the game past the network test, more and more enemies and bosses are going to try and incentivize you to use the posture breaking mechanics more and more. Brother, there's and not just in the game. I think the marketing material actually hints at how you're supposed to play as well. On the line, they showed off a very well-timed fully charged R2 
which posture broke the dragon. And then he went in for a repost. Or I guess it's not a repost, a critical strike. Go in there and stab him right so in the yes, fucking eyeball! I the game in the eye pussy! ...away from traditional R1 spams when it comes to battle. They also talked to Vati, the biggest Dark Souls lore YouTuber. And Vati talked about this specific subject. Vati, adi, adi, adi. say about it. You will find I can't read that left panel. ...away from just R1s and realizing, oh my god, R2s are insane. Oh, I can I read Never mind, I found it. I fought R1 and I didn't stagger it at all, but then I fought it weaving in some R2s and staggered it multiple times, and I could do multiple crits. That is true. We was never wise. we never really got any staggers on market when we were using just R one's attack. I had no fucking clue how to play the game. Supposed to use R twos in combat. It was more of a niche button. After many hours with Elden Ring, I was happy to niche. see that combat has deepened. There was also a Reddit post called "You're Playing It Wrong: A Comprehensive Guide of How I Think Elden Ring's Combat Works," and that post is basically making the same points. That Elden Ring is trying to guide us away. There's the Game of Thrones music in the background got super distracting for a moment. From just spamming R ones. And that he thinks people haven't really noticed it yet, mm -hmm. because we're set in our ways from having played so many Souls games at this point. Let me just quote a little bit of what he says. Also, a lot of people have already noticed that the roll animation covers less distance and has less iframes than we are used to. Brother, I didn't this pay, I didn't, I mean, I didn't play the other ones, but I rolled through everything. Rolls with your blocks, which also allows you to use the block counters. I didn't. This way, the Sekiro elements really start to shine. I mean, the block elements are you sick. you have to be absolutely reactive in your blocks. And the combat starts to become something far greater than just big Dark Souls. It's beefier and more agile at the same time. I'm actually kind of mad. complex, dynamic, and brutal dance. This guy then goes on to explain how... I'm kind of mad I never once blocked, like, dual wielding, not dual wielding, but two-handing a weapon. How he thinks that Margit is supposed to be a kind of wall that forces you to engage with all of these different melee mechanics. A Margit engage me to fucking call my friends. Specifics. You can read his post, I'll link it in the description. But seeing as how Margit was the way that I came to realize the utility of these mechanics, I think that he's probably right. I can't vouch for the. I also have a theory. I wait till this is over. Rolls have less iframes or cover less distance. I didn't test that. I just I just roll but when I when I roll. I think this guy and Vati are right. The game is trying to lead us away from the traditional way that melee has so far been done in Dark Souls, which is fantastic and gets me really excited. This is the biggest upgrade in depth that. Souls melee combat has ever had with the possible exception of Sekiro but a lot of people don't consider Sekiro a Souls game. Yeah, and I find that very weird that Regardless, they don't cuz the game's really fun as fuck and it's hard as fuck. It, which is good because happily there's only about a month left before Elden Ring releases. I'm so excited. So excited. Oh, this is out but before anyway, Elden Ring was even launched. As always, thank you very much for watching. Okay, here's my theory. He didn't kill Margaret in that. The focus of shit. He didn't kill Margaret in this. He got him down. To like a, a very, very low health at one point. Right? He gets him right Brandon here, but he has one flash left, and he takes that swing, and he gets all that health taken away. You to use the posture breaking mechanics more and more. He rolls through. We don't see him do nothing else. I say he gets a couple more hits in, and then gets fucking fadonked. All right, you got to show me that you're killing the boss. If not, I can't, I can't buy into what you're saying. But I do agree. Uh, it, it does. I mean, it made me want to play a lot differently than I was playing Dark Souls 1. But at the same time, while you can block like that, and you can block with the sword, and you can block with the shield, and do those counterattacks against bosses, brother, Ashes of War, I'm just unleashing. Whatever I got, I'm summoning, I'm unleashing, I'm going to make it as easy as possible for me to beat that fucking boss. So I don't disagree with what he said, but I definitely think if it's trying to get you to play differently, it did a good job, because the, the block counters is was definitely something fucking special, to say the least. Crippy. I like it. Yeah, I didn't see the January 21st, 2022. I didn't know people even had access to, like, test this shit out, you know? I didn't know that was a thing. 